So you said Select is a, a crafty company, but uh, yeah, originally you know, it's like yeah. the gene editing company. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it eventually reinvented itself into a CAR T company, but it's really the core technology of Selectis uh, yes. has always been uh, gene editing. And, and when, I, uh, when I did this internship and then my PhD, um, the company was really about using meganucleases, which was like an older version uh, uh, of uh, gene editing. And at that time, that was the only two gene editing uh, technology that were available. So we're talking about 2009, 2010. Yeah. Or, uh, so not that long ago, but that was before CRISPR, before Talon, you know. So, yeah. Um, and and they were using meganucleases uh, to um, to go after different uh, low size, and they were interested in. Uh, and my PhD was interested in, in uh, identifying what we call safe harbors. Yes. Which is a locus in the genome where you can uh, integrate a transgenes that would uh, be expressed at a good level for a therapeutic purpose without affecting in any way the physiology of the cells or the transcriptional level of genes that are flanking um, the, the locus of integrations. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and this is while I was there, actually, that uh, first the talent came, um, making it much easier than meganuclease because meganuclease uh, to change the specificity uh, of the protein, you need to engineer the protein. Yeah. So you have to go through a saturation mutagenesis of specific amino acids. It's very complex. It takes a long time to isolate a new protein every time you have a new locus. Talent arrived. And with Talent, that was new because they broke the code. They identified the, some DNA binding domains where they can just put bricks that were matching uh, and interacting with specific nucleotides. And, and then it made it much easier. And on top of being easier, it was also working at a higher efficiency yes. and, and their specificity than meganucleases. So when this technology arrived, Selectis was one of the pioneer to, to use this technology, first in collaborations with uh, Minnesota University, and then they developed a lot of their own versions of that. Um, and, uh, and so Selectis was really into making uh, their business model was really being the, I remember at that time they were calling that being the Microsoft uh, of gene editing, saying that they're going to make uh, nucleases and sell it to everyone. But then, you know, CRISPR arrived. Uh, <laughs> and, and with CRISPR, you know, any uh, undergrad that uh, uh, knows a little bit of molecular biology can do a new, uh, a new cut in like a week. So, uh, so the whole business model was not really relevant to the market. So that's when they reinvented themselves in yeah. saying, okay, we're not going to use and develop gene editing for others. We're going to make our own products. Yeah. And, and they identified, so that was in 2012. At that time, they were already collaborating with Michel Satterling. Uh, and uh, a new uh, CSO came uh, to, to work with the therapeutic branches of the company, uh, Andy Scharenberg. And they really pushed together... Uh, the T cell orientation in the, in the company. Uh, and the first thing was okay, uh, they were interested in making allogenic CAR T cells. Uh, and to do that, we needed to uh, knock out, disrupt the T cell receptors to avoid graft versus host disease. Um, and so I was involved in, uh, in these uh, optimizations of how to deliver a talent mRNA into T cells, so optimizing electroporations of T cells. Um, and eventually, we set up a protocol that uh, became the clinical protocol and, and treated the first uh, patients with uh, uh, with the allogenic CAR T products. Uh, 